welcome to the Survivor to Thriver show with your happiness expert, Samia Bano. Do you feel stuck, silent, and stressed? Is something hurting your heart and soul? Are you burning yourself out? If so, you are in the right place because this is the podcast. People from all over the world join in to learn exactly how to stop suffering and start living with inner peace and joy. Let's get started. Hey, last episode, we started talking about something very, very important. That is domestic violence awareness. I was sharing with you that the statistics show us a world in which one out of every 10 intimate partner relationships is abusive. There's abuse in the relationship. One partner is abusing the other. And actually, if you look at the statistics uh, among teenagers, like teen dating, the incidence of teen dating violence, teen dating abuse, or abuse in teen dating relationships is even higher. It goes up to uh, 25 to 35% of teen dating relationships are abusive. So whether you realize it or recognize it or not in a conscious way right now, the fact is that you know people who are being abused and you know people who are doing the abusing And because we are all interconnected, we are all interdependent, all the, the, the fact that you know, we are living in, a, in, in communities, in, in, in societies where there's so much abuse, so much violence prevalent in our relationships, this is something that is affecting us all. It poisons the environment for us all. It creates negative energy in our environment that affects us all. And if you don't have awareness of the issues involved in domestic violence, in what makes up abusive relationships, what abuse can look like, and how to deal with it, then you can get into a lot of trouble because you may not be able to spot the warning signs, the red flags, that if you paid attention to them, you might have been able to prevent a friend, a family member, a loved one from getting themselves into an abusive relationship, getting yourself into an abusive relationship, or if you are in it already, or if your loved one is in it already, then how are you going to help them effectively to get out of it? If you don't have proper awareness, proper education of what the issues involved are, what the risks involved are. So educating ourselves about these issues is absolutely critical for all of us. Regardless of whether right now you are in a relationship with an intimate partner or not, and whether you're, if you are in an intimate partner relationship, even if your relationship is a happy relationship, well, good for you. But this issue of domestic violence is still impacting your life, and impacting the lives of your loved ones. So you still need to educate yourself about 
about these issues. It's extremely important. And one of the biggest problems that I find is a lack of understanding among people in general around the idea of abuse. Like people don't really understand what abuse is, what it can look like. Most people, like I was mentioning in the last episode, have a very limited understanding, a very limited perspective on, on what abuse is. And it's limited to physical abuse. People think if you're not being beaten and, you know, like hit and uh, left with bruises and blood and broken bones, then you're not being abused. Or it's not that serious. But the reality is far different. Pretty much all abusive relationships, when they start, they're not physically abusive. Physical abuse is something that that the uh, that the relationship um, gets into over time. Like you get into a cycle of violence. There's a pattern of abusive behavior that defines abusive relationships that is very characteristic of abusive relationships, right? And in this cycle of violence, this pattern of abusive behavior, what we see happening is that there's like this continuum uh, you can think of, of negative behaviors. And when the relationship first starts out, the negative behaviors that you see are on the mild end of the continuum. So they're not always um, very obviously abusive. In fact, uh, we may not even recognize them to be abusive. But over time, those behaviors become more and more intense. They become more and more frequent. They become more and more aggressive, more and more hurtful, moving towards the extreme end of bad behavior, hurtful behavior, harmful behavior, to the point where you know it'll escalate into physical manifestations of abuse. So it's not something that just happens in a day. Like if, if you know somebody who is the right now in a situation where they're being physically abused, it didn't just happen in a day. It just didn't happen out of the blue. You may find yourself surprised about it happening or that it has happened. But I can tell you, if you look into what that person has been going through, what they have been experiencing over the course of their relationship, if you know what to look for, if you know about the warning signs, the red flags, you will not be surprised at all. It's actually very, very predictable when relationships become abusive. So let's take some time today and we'll probably need to spend more more than just today to look at these issues but I'm willing to do that and I hope you're you're willing to spend that time with me because it's so critical and yes I may be talking about these issues right now within the context of domestic violence awareness but Here's the thing, the basic principles of how to create and maintain a healthy relationship are universally applicable. So even if you're not that interested in domestic violence as an issue, 
because let's say you are not in any relationships with intimate partners and you're not interested in that kind of thing for the foreseeable future. That's fine. But you know what? The same kind of tactics and techniques that an abusive husband or boyfriend or girlfriend will use to abuse you in an intimate partner relationship are the same kinds of techniques and tactics that will be used by any abuser to perpetuate abuse in any kind of relationship. So if you're experiencing abuse in the context of work relationships, this is a huge problem. There's so many workplaces where the work culture is absolutely toxic. It's absolutely toxic. People are constantly abusing each other in the work environment. Or it may be with some other members of your family if it's not with an intimate partner. There may be an aunt, an uncle, an in-law, a brother, a sister, right? So the, the, the universe, the principles of how to create and maintain a healthy relationship are universally applicable. And in the same way, the techniques and the tactics and the strategies that are used to abuse and manipulate and control others, they're also universal. So it's really, really important that you learn about these things. So stay with me. All right. So the way I thought um, it may be really helpful to begin to gain a deeper understanding of what abuse can look like, particularly at the mild end of the continuum. So before the abusive behavior has become obviously abusive, before it has become gone to the extreme of, you know, like physical violence and um, very obvious uh, forms of abuse like screaming and shouting and, um, you know, public humiliation and uh, those kinds of things. What can it look like when it's still in in perhaps the beginning stages where there, you know, uh, where you can possibly, if you catch it in time, that you could prevent things from getting worse, that you could actually take uh, corrective action, maybe even prevent the relationship from turning abusive by taking proper corrective preventive action. So I want to, uh, I'm going to uh, give you a scenario. I'm going to describe to you a scenario. And then I want you to think about the, the scenario in terms of, well, is what I'm describing as abusive or not? If yes, why? If not, why not? Like, think about it. So, that we can learn to differentiate and distinguish. And of course, you know, I'm going to give you my interpretation and my understanding of the situation. And if you happen to not agree with me, I encourage you to connect with me, contact me, let me know what you're thinking. And, uh, you know, depending on what feedback I get, what questions, what comments, etc., I may be able to respond to you either directly, depending on how you connect with me, or even in one of our future shows. So do connect with me, and you know how. You can just go to my website at www.academyofthriving.com, click on the contact us page, and you'll see how you can reach me. All right, so let me just uh, give you the scenario now. Okay, so we'll imagine a heterosexual couple, 
for convenience. Uh, we'll call the, the woman in the scenario Megan. And let's call the man in the scenario John. So this is a scenario involving Megan and John. Okay, so I want you to imagine that Megan had or has a, a group of girlfriends that she's very, very close with. And she loves uh, going to the movies with them and going to the mall with them and just having a quality girl time with them. And then Megan met John uh, and they fell in love. And Megan and John, you know, they wanted to spend every minute with each other. And they actually started spending every spare minute together. And this went on for a good, like, maybe three months or so. At this point, Megan's friends, her girlfriends, have been telling her that they really miss her, that they want her to make some time for them and hang out with them like they used to because they haven't spent any time in a long time. It's been many, many weeks since they've had any girl time together. And Megan actually would love to uh, go out with her girlfriend and have some quality girl time as well. But every time she brings it up to John, she tells him that, um, you know, like, I want to go have a day out with my girls. He just tells her, oh, no, please don't go. I love you so much. I miss you so much when you're not with me. You know, I, I just want to be with you. I love you so much. Please, why do you have to go? Don't go. And he begs her, uh, you know, and she she's like, oh, well, I don't. You know, she doesn't want to hurt his feelings. She loves him. And she feels so guilty that, you know, she, oh, oh my gosh, she loves me so much and wants to spend all this time with me. And I'm such a bad girlfriend because, you know, I don't want the same thing. It's like he loves me more than I love him. That must be it. That's why, you know, he wants to spend all his time with me, but I don't. Oh, she feels so guilty about it. And so she keeps... Because of all this, she keeps putting off her girlfriends and not seeing them. So let's say this is a scenario. Now, do you see any abuse in, in the scenario? Do you see any red flags or warning signals that there might be abuse in the scenario? When you think about it. See, it's like, from my perspective, yes, there is in fact a very, very strong red flag warning signal in this scenario. If this is all the information I have, if this is all I know about this particular case, this is not enough information for me to be able to conclude that there is abuse in the relationship, but there is in fact a very strong uh, warning and uh, or at least a, a, a clear red flag in this scenario. What is that red flag? That red flag is how Megan is starting to become isolated and cut off from her other friends and family. This is a matter of concern. You know, you may think that, oh, it's just that he loves her so much. It's being so sweet. Oh, it's just young love. They're so passionate and etc., etc. But the truth of the matter is the fact 
is that in healthy relationships, we all need some time and space apart. As much as we need time together, we also need time and space apart. No one person in our lives can serve every function, meet every need that we need to have met. Because we are all limited in different ways. We all have different strengths and weaknesses and talents. So for example, let's say, you know, like in the scenario, Megan loves going to the mall. She loves going uh, to the movies. She, because she li- and, and she really enjoys the quality girl time as she's engaging in those activities. Now, yes, she can go to the mall, she can go to the movies with her boyfriend, but it's a very different experience than when you go with your gr- girlfriends, right? And what if her boyfriend doesn't even like going to the mall or doesn't like going to the movies or doesn't like going to the same movies? So, you know, there's a hundred different reasons why you need or may need or want to be with someone else, to do something with someone else other than your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, or your wife. Doesn't mean you don't love them, doesn't mean you don't want to spend time with them. It just means you also need some time apart. You also need to do some other things that you cannot necessarily do with your significant other, with your intimate partner. So in healthy relationships, furthermore, you see, we'll always have... um, at least a few quality relationships. You know, it's uh, 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 any healthy person uh, who has good communication skills, who's, who is uh, in a healthy frame of uh, mind and heart and all that good stuff. I mean, why would they not have multiple healthy relationships in their lives? That doesn't make any sense. Right, so when um, you know if people begin to get really isolated within a certain relationship, or because of a certain relationship, it's a cause of concern. And in this case, even though John does not, um, you know, make any. kind of um, obvious or overt um, demands or um, does not display any very obvious controlling behavior in terms of forbidding Megan from going to see her friends or physically stopping her or restraining her. Nonetheless, you know, he is Uh, the way that he speaks to her, it's like emotionally controlling. Now, I don't know what his intention may be. I don't want to necessarily get into the game of judging intentions. But we can judge behavior and we can judge, uh, you know, what the results are of the behavior. And the behavior is emotionally controlling, Megan. Right. So there is uh, there is a certain problem, and the fact that Megan is starting to feel guilty, you know, in response to uh, the way that John um, speaks to her, the fact that she's feeling guilty about leaving him because of how he expresses himself to her, that's a problem. Right. That's a warning signal. A red flag. Now, 
again, like remember uh, uh, this um, uh, this analogy. Uh, you know, I like to always, I always think of this analogy when it comes to understanding why we need to take something like this seriously. See, most people will not take this seriously. But the reason we need to take this seriously is you think about it in the context of what happened. You know, have you heard about how to boil a frog? See, if you take a frog, like it's a healthy frog and a live frog, and you drop the frog in a pot of boiling water, the frog will jump right out. Because we all have a strong survival instinct. None of us want to die. No one wants to boil uh, and burn to death. And the frog is capable, very much capable of jumping out of the pot, and it does. But if you put the frog in a pot of cold water, and then you slowly, slowly, slowly heat the water up to boiling point. The frog does not jump out. It actually ends up um, boiling, uh, burning to death. Because when you slowly, slowly, slowly heat the water, it's like the frog is not able to recognize, to realize the danger that it's in until it's too late. And the same kind of thing happens in the context of abusive relationships, where I was telling you about the cycle of violence. You see? It's like it creeps up on you. It starts like this, very mild, very not obvious, unless you're educated, unless you know what to look for, what the red flags are, what the points of concern are. And then before you know it, you see, it's like... It becomes so bad that you want to get out of it and you realize you can't. Or you realize, oh my God, it's like so hard. So... Uh, you know, in a lot of uh, cases, unfortunately, people don't realize, don't recognize that they're in an abusive relationship until it's, you know, uh, like, I don't want to say too late, but until they're like in pretty deep into it. And then, you know, the deeper you've gone in, allowed yourself um uh, to stay the longer you've allowed the the whole situation to be brewing and, and, and to be for you to stay in it, the harder it becomes to control, to change, to avert. The sooner you can catch it, the sooner you can address these kinds of behaviors and sort of nip them in the bud, take corrective action, the better your chance of actually try like you can actually prevent a relationship from becoming abusive potentially you could uh, or 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 to uh, transform the negative behaviors into something uh, positive but by the time it becomes like really extreme where it's like really obvious that the behavior is problematic, that it's actually abusive, that it's actually violent, and it becomes really obvious by that time, it, it's like really, really difficult. It becomes really, really difficult to change the mindset, change the behavior of the abusive person. Or to even change your own mindset, change even your own behavior. Because we're creatures of habit, right? So you don't want to allow yourself to get into the habit of tolerating problematic behaviors, tolerating abusive behavior, violent behavior. So educate yourself. 
And of course, we are going to continue to educate ourselves on this issue uh, over the next few episodes. So stick with me. And in the meanwhile, if this is something you find yourself struggling with, remember, please, you can reach out for help and support. Do not continue to struggle with it on your own. And you know that I'm one person you can reach out to. Just uh, go to my website at www.academyofthriving.com. Click on the Contact Us page and you'll see how you can connect with me. So until next time, I wish you lots of peace and joy.